morning, beautiful people. Alonzo Kelly here. Uh, wanted to send you uh, a short personal message uh, about how excited I am to see you in what I'm going to call a few weeks uh, at the WayTag Conference, the Wisconsin Association for Talented and Gifted. First, you should know how humbled I am to be invited to serve all of you. Um, I do know that there are a lot of people uh, that are very passionate about um, you and our kids and this topic of, of giftedness. And so to be uh, selected uh, to, to serve you is indeed an honor. So thank you for that. So what is it you can expect from me? What is the experience? What is the loving headache I'm going to create? What are some of your takeaways? First, let me start by saying um, I uh, arrive at this intersection with you in terms of what I do in my in my job, which I do not believe I have a job, but in my job, um, I am invited to serve individuals and organizations around the world on uh, this topic of utilizing critical thinking uh, for leadership, conflict resolution, uh, strategy, um, and professional development. In terms of my service to the community, um, I in no particular order. Um, I am super uh, excited to be president-elect uh, for SANG, which is supporting the emotional needs of the gifted. Um, I will be coming to you from the greater Green Bay community. I live in the Howard Swamico area where I serve on the police and fire commission. Um, I am on the board of directors for family services of Northeast Wisconsin, uh, where we are uh, called upon to serve families and youth in crisis. Um, and then on a national level, I'm also uh, the national board rep for the Wisconsin chapter of the ACLU, uh, American Civil Liberties Union. So when I am with you, um, I am going to stick to something I am particularly passionate about. And it's how do we create, how do we support, how do we advocate uh, for our families and our kids uh, to be in a place where all feel they belong, uh, where we all feel like we belong. I am not going to spend a ton of time talking about this pandemic because quite honestly, uh, I'm sick of it. But I do know uh, it has afforded uh, us some opportunities to have uh, what I am excited about, some more in-depth discussions. And I will start with this message of we are all in this together. I personally wish we uh, would stop acting like we invented that uh, because when I first heard that, I was thinking to myself, though I'm not old enough, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, I, I would imagine everybody on the Titanic said that too. We're all in this together. But can we agree that not everyone on the Titanic was having the same experience? And that's how I feel about it today. We are absolutely all in this together and we are not all having the same experience. And so what I'm gonna talk about is how do we, um, in, in uh, a way that invites um, authentic relationships, not creates conflict intentionally, but invites people uh, to want to have an authentic relationship with us. How do we have this conversation? What can we introduce to people in terms of another way to look at it? And then explicitly, what are some of the questions we can ask or the tools we can use so that we can have this conversation together? There is nothing more frustrating than showing up to a game and only one party knows the rules. So how can we introduce people to the same rules? One of the things I'm gonna start with is this picture um, and I'm gonna use it uh, when, I, when I see you along with a few others. Um, the first thing that I'm, and I'm noticing in terms of uh, communities where everyone feels they belong is we are all being measured against uh, some memo of what the real version of us is. And so if you look at this picture, um, I can find a lion in a zoo in the circus and in the wild. Well, which one is the real one? And in my experience, what people will do is they'll say, well, it's the, it's the lion in the wild. And I'll say, well, what about the lion in the zoo? And they'll say, well, you know, it's a, it's a lion, but it's not like a real lion. And then right away comes this psychologically violent uh, realization that people are pointing out that where I am raised, 
or the culture of the environment I'm in, or the attitudes, beliefs, and rituals that I enjoy somehow no longer make me real because of my environment. Like that lion in the zoo is not a real lion or that lion in the circus is not a real lion. And family, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how that simple exercise then portrays itself out to relationships and the challenges that creates, especially when we're talking about um, our kids from, from uh, who are kids of color um, and not just one color, all colors or of uh, a different sexual orientation or um, are of a different religion or attitude belief. There's a memo of what the real one is and we're all being compared against the real one. Uh, and if we do not meet every stamp of the real one, then we're not real. And what does that create? So we're gonna talk about that. I'm also then going to share with you a tool that I use. I use it in coaching uh, in my practice, but I also use it uh, in managing conflict. And, and the way that it works super quick is we're all thinking about something for a reason um, from a particular point of view. And from that point of view, we're making assumptions. Those assumptions, 99% of the time, occupy our thoughts on what if I'm right? But what if I'm wrong? We do not spend enough time on that. What if I'm wrong? Well, what information am I using to help me feel better about the fact that I know I'm right? Well, what are the, what are the inferences or, or as we say, like, what are the, what are the logical conclusions I'm drawing? If this and this and this and this, then this must be true. Neither our inferences or our assumptions make us right. And people struggle with that. We're going to talk about that. So what is the concept? Are we talking about fairness? Are we talking about equity? Are we talking about uh, diversity inclusion? Uh, are we talking about teamwork? What is education? What is it we're actually talking about? And are we asking ourselves the right questions? So we're going to use that. What you can expect to happen uh, in my presence is we're all going to laugh. Uh, we're all going to learn. Uh, we're going we're gonna to show up in love. Uh, we all want the same things. Uh, we are all looking at the same thing. It does not mean we're all telling ourselves the same story. So how can we arrive at intersections with one another, whether it's um, our children, uh, fellow parents, our peers in the community, the educators, administrators, the boards, the elected officials? Um, how can we arrive at this intersection with some type of tool or, or uh, order of conversation that allows for us to leave feeling like the relationship is authentic and that we all belong here? So that's what you can expect from me. So thank you, uh, Waytag, for inviting me to once again be a part of your day. Thank you to all of you who are giving of your time, uh, talent, and resources uh, on this particular day uh, to, for all of us to learn from. I do hope this message is finding you all well and safe and healthy and patient and diligent and selfishly, I hope it's finding you thinking. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you in a few weeks. See you in a few weeks. Thanks. Bye.